Welcome back to another video folks. You will see I'm standing a little closer to the camera to show off my new Sling Mountain t-shirt. Yep, I've been spending too much time on the internet. Lockdown is bad for your spending, isn't it? Too much time to type away and buy silly things like this. I did, you've got my logo on the back as well though, so I can put it on my tax return and stuff as, as company wear. So, yeah, method to the madness. Lockdowns, all things are blurring into one a bit, aren't they? I've had, uh, had some batteries delivered for the camera yesterday, which is great. But I just ordered some more because I didn't really remember that I'd ordered those ones. So I've got another set of batteries coming soon as well. Oh, more the merrier, isn't it? Tuesday, two minute Tuesday, 10 minute Tuesday. I've forgotten what I kind of pretended I'd aim for. You know, as uh, as you know, I'm, I'm not very good at keeping them short and sharp, but I'm gonna give it a go. I always try, gotta love a trier, haven't you? Now this video, right, you've read the title already. It's something along the lines of, does it matter what belay method you teach? And like, frankly, just no, it doesn't. And people are gonna get wound up by this video. I bet you there'll be people who, who won't agree with what I'm saying. And that's cool, isn't it? That's climbing. There's loads of methods for doing all these different things. I'll back it up by saying I've been teaching climbing for like 20 years. I feel so old when I say that. At all sorts of levels, from taster sessions through to coaching and giving soft catches and all that kind of stuff and everything in between. And I've gone through loads of qualifications, your RCI and your MCI and coaching stuff and all sorts of CPD about teaching this stuff. So I'd like to think I'm fairly experienced at it. Plus I've held a flipping load of catches as well, like on trad, on sport, all sorts, um, even winter. It's exciting in winter, the pro and stuff is always a bit more sketchy, so it's always an added element of excitement. So that, that's where I'm coming from. And I think really, I've evolved into into that train of thought that just it doesn't matter what method you're going to teach as long as you teach it well. There's loads of different methods. I'll show us a few in a minute. I'll miss some. I won't get them all, and I've no intention of getting them all. There's some out there I won't even heard of because you know there's a whole world of belaying methods out there. But I'll give you some key ones, right? In that twenty or so years, I've gone through various ways of teaching belaying, right? Do I have my favoured one? Yeah, of course I do. In a year's time, if you ask me what's my favourite one, it might be different to what I'm saying now because these things evolve, aren't they? And do I teach the same method every time? Absolutely I don't, right? You've got to have loads of different methods in that cringy phrase in your toolbox so that you can teach the method that's appropriate to your clients, your group, okay? Someone might not be getting your, your preferred methods, just not clicking with them. Oh, that's great, try a different method. And they might go, oh, yeah, got it straight away, ace and then you can evolve it perhaps. That, that's the key to it really, is having all these different methods and teaching them well and safely. Right? That's far more important to me. When I'm running an RCI, a rock climbing instructor course, shouldn't use the abbreviations all the time, or a rock climbing development instructor course, or teaching learn to lead courses, or coaching, whatever it is, right? I need to do it in a safe way. That's far more important, right? I need to teach in a progressive way, okay? So let's have a look at a few before I get completely waffled out. I'm going to use an ATC uh, just because it's my kind of go-to device. You can have a whole other discussion of is it best to teach on this or an assisted braking device. I'm not going to even touch onto that now. That will cause even more arguments for sure it will. Let's just think how a belay device works. Simplistically, right, it creates a kink in there which adds friction. Great. So the locked position is keeping that and pulled down on the braking strand of rope. That's what we want to maintain, all right? Any time it's up here, it's not that it's inherently unsafe as such because we can move it down to there, but it's kind of the weak area of the belay system, isn't it? It's when it's in its unlocked position, okay? These methods I'm gonna show you now, which I'll just fire through, it's not like a lesson in belay methods. They've all got their pros and cons. Absolutely they have, right? any of them have. You've just got to decide, you know, which ones work best for you and in that situation, right? Okay, so none of these are inherently unsafe at all. How did you learn to belay? Think back to that. I can't even remember being taught to belay because so long ago, but I'm pretty sure it would have been a V knee one, two, three thing. So you make a V shape, you go to your knee, you one, you two, you three. Okay, a slight evolution of that might be you make a V shape, you go down to your knee, you one, you slide. Okay, so it stops the hand swapping. Potential issue with that, right? 
with the hand swapping especially is people get a little bit confused and often go up to here and then to that ah hang on we're not holding on to that breaking strand anymore that's that's not so good and people do like to make massive v's and go right down to their knees so there's kind of a lot of time in that uh, unlocked position so that could be a downside we could evolve that and refine it slightly perhaps by going up to i thigh one two three something along those lines I'm not sure I even go that big in normal, it's more like shoulders or something. So if you can come up with a rhyme that's something that rhymes with shoulder, I don't know, but something like that, that might be ace, might it? I think this is an American one. Um, P bus, P B U S, pull, break, under, slide. Yeah, that works, doesn't it? Repeat, repeat, repeat. Quite like the little mnemonic thing. What else can we do? Well, we could do it without even touching the climber's side of the rope. Keep both hands down here, up, down, slide, slide, up, down, hand swap, ha whatever you want to do, right? I like the sliding one, I quite like this one. Uh, kind of, that hand swap is kind of becomes a bit ingrained sometimes, doesn't it? Right. That, that works really well, doesn't it? Uh, what else do I see? Oh, loads of other ones. One that I um, saw the other day, you take in, without going up into that V, you take in this way, and with this device, because it's got that kind of groove cut out and teeth, that works okay, that one, right? You're kind of in that sort of some friction there though, aren't you? So with some devices that won't work so well, it kind of wants to grab and lock up. But there's pros to it, right? Cons and pros to all these methods. Think to what you do when you're personal climbing. I'm not saying we should always do at work what we do in personal climbing, but what do I do? Shuffle, called tunneling, right? Is that good? Some people are having a, a bit of a strop right now going, he's sliding on the braking strand, he hasn't got one hand fixed on the braking strand the whole time. No, you're right, I haven't. Is it okay, is it safe? Yeah, would I teach that to beginners? I might do, right, depends. Those are all these things, it depends, right? So you can see there, just in a couple of minutes, I've shown a few different ones, and I like different elements of all of them. Were any of them unsafe? No, I don't think so, right? That's the key. All have their good and bad points. I know I keep stressing it, but if someone tells you that's the best way, I've switched off already, right? I don't think there is a best way. There's ways that are appropriate here, there, with this device, with that device, because that's going to affect it all as well. That group, that group, this place, that place. Uh, there's just so many variables, isn't there? The best way, no, I don't really buy into that, I'll be honest. What's more important is how you're teaching them, and that is super important, okay? So on this setup, right, I've been belaying up through a carabiner on Sling Mountain. I like doing something like that because of a couple of things. It maintains the kind of correct orientation of all this lot, but more importantly, there's no climber on the end of it. And I cringe at this, I do see people teaching belaying for the very first time, like proper belaying like this, right? With someone on the, on the rock or on the wall, and this person down here is doing all this and getting panicked, and who wouldn't be panicked, right? Uh, with a, a climber up there, someone's life in their hands, that's well sketch, isn't it? I don't like that at all. What I see sometimes, is people doing it at ground level and hooking it over something and doing it this way. Hey, that's certainly better than having a climber on the end. What's the downside? Uh, the orientation's a little bit odd, isn't it? So by having it up on Sling Mountain or wherever, it doesn't even have to be on the rock, does it? Could just be a sling over a tree and a, a crab on it and the rope running through that. Anything to avoid the potential disaster of having something go wrong and the climber falling off. Oh, scary thought that, isn't it? And, and I mean that, even if the instructor's backing up and they have a little smiler open, they're holding on there, there's still slack in the system. A fall can turn into quite a big fall, especially by the time that slack's gone, the climber, the b has been pulled up a bit. So for me, that's the next step, right? They learn to belay with zero jeopardy. They get the hang of it. They've shown they can do it. Whichever method you're teaching, they've shown they can do it safely. Well, the next step would then be to have a climber on the end, really, wouldn't it? And you're backing up, right? You've got to be holding that rope when you first start, uh, you know, having a real climber on the end. And yeah, you gradually you step away more and more. But for those first steps that we're on about now, 
back it up. You just have to. This is a one instructor to one climbing line kind of thing for me. I'm just going to show you now this other method. I have to really, I really try hard with this method to get it right. Down, swap, up to there. So you'll be laying right-handed, then left-handed, then right-handed. Have a go at that if you've never tried it before. I wouldn't teach that one because I'm, I don't use it a lot myself, so I have to think really hard. I might show it, but it's not one that I would teach particularly, just for that reason, okay? Am I saying it's a bad method? Absolutely I'm not. Just blows my mind a bit because I'm not used to it. So we've taught belaying in a nice, safe, progressive manner, right? And there's loads of evolutions. You can do at ground level. You can do two belayers, one taking in, one giving out, that kind of thing. You can do lowering, can't you, by someone pulling on that rope and, and me going into that. Uh, kind of thing. That's really important as well. How do we lower with it? We can talk about b and taking in. Got to lower as well, haven't you? So what do we do? Just let it slide through our hands? No, we probably do some shuffling. Uh, we can go into that more, but you know, keeping it in control and everything. We'll leave that out that for now. It's supposed to be a short video, isn't it? So, does the b method matter inherently? No, they can all be safe, right? Have they all got their pros and cons? Yes, they have. Will you prefer some to others? Yes, you will. Do I prefer some to others? Yes, of course I will. Am I more, far more concerned about people understanding why they teach what they teach and teaching it in a nice, safe way? Absolutely, that's far more important, right? If you take anything from this video, take away the fact that it's far more important to do it well rather than just get sucked into going, this is the best method. And as I say, people will get wound up and people there'll be some people thinking I'm like having a go at them and stuff and I'm not I'm absolutely not not at all I'm just going on my experience like I say of, of quite some time and having gone through all this and probably once upon a time I'd have been really defensive as well and gone yeah you should teach this method this is the best way with experience comes a little bit more understanding of these things I guess uh, and like I say, I keep learning. So if you've got a belay method you like that I haven't covered, I'll chuck it in the comments. Tell me about it. Chuck a link to it or something. You know, tell me your preferred methods. Tell me if you think I'm chatting a load of rubbish and there is a best way. You know, who, I can chat rubbish as much as anyone, and I can chat rubbish for longer than most people as well. Hence why these videos are so long. But yeah, have a little think about it. Chuck something in the comments. You know, get involved. That's great to see. Please do fire away with any questions as well, right? I'd love to hear them. Once again, hit that like button, smash the subscribe button, find us on Insta. I got quite aggressive then, didn't I? Uh, find us on Facebook as well. I'm not really, I'm pretty mellow to be honest. Um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed watching. More videos coming up very soon.